Many people have been led to believe that, although the Bible is full of interesting stories, its history is mythological and made up, with no archaeological support. This series is dedicated to those who need help dislodging that dubious claim. Remember Ruth, the Moabitess? She comes from Moab. Let's talk about the kingdom of Moab for a bit. Moab was just due east from the southern tribe of Judah. And in 2 Kings chapter 3, we see a story about Mesha, king of Moab. In verse 4 it says, Now Mesha, king of Moab, raised sheep, and he had to pay the king of Israel a tribute of a hundred thousand lambs and the wool of a hundred thousand rams. But after Ahab died, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. In 1868, in Palestine, there was discovered a stone from the kingdom of Moab. This is referred to as the Mesha steel, or the Moabite stone. It actually seems to corroborate the story from 2 Kings chapter 3 by bringing up the revolt of Mesha against Israel. Mesha's stone mentions that their god, Chemosh, the god of Moab, had been angry with his people and had allowed them to be subjugated to Israel. But eventually, Chemosh returned and assisted Mesha to throw off the yoke of Israel and restore the lands of Moab. The Moabite stone says this, As for Omri, the king of Israel, and he humbled Moab for many years, for Chemosh was angry with his land, and his son reigned in his place, and he also said, I will oppress Moab. In my days he said so, but I triumphed over him and over his house, and Israel has perished. It has perished forever, and Omri took possession of the whole land of Medeba, and he lived there in his days, and half the days of his son Ahab, forty years. And Chemosh said to me, Go, take Nebo from Israel. And I went in the night and fought against it from the daybreak until midday, and I took it, and I killed the whole population, seven thousand male subjects and aliens, and female subjects, aliens, and servant girls. For I had devoted them to destruction for the god Ashtar Chemosh. And from there I took the vessels of Yahweh, and I presented them before the face of Chemosh. And the king of Israel had built Yahaz, and he stayed there throughout his campaign against me. And Chemosh drove him away before my face. Later it says, And I have built Beth Medeba, and Beth Diblatin, and Beth Baalmeon, and I brought there flocks of the land, and the house of David dwelt in Haranen. So, it's not surprising that the Mesha steel is favorable to Mesha. It does seem like he kind of exaggerates a little bit, especially when he says, But I triumphed over him, and over his house, and Israel has perished. It has perished forever! It's not surprising that the Second Kings chapter 3 account of this story is favorable to Israel and Judah, and the Mesha steel is favorable to Mesha. I want to point out one small thing. Um, you see here that even other ancient cultures used 40 years to signify indefinite periods of time. Second, this seems to corroborate the Bible's account of Mesha revolting against Israel, as Second Kings says that they did. And third, it mentions by name Israel, David, and Yahweh. Any one of those references would be amazing. Some critics still want to believe that there's no evidence for David outside the Bible, but this is now our second ancient and extra-biblical reference to him by name. I hope this was interesting and encouraging to you. But remember, the question is not, can we prove everything in the Bible? The question rather should be, where there is archaeological evidence, does it in fact support biblical witness or not? Thank you for watching.